to Europe now and unhappy days are here again. Greece is looking at a Euro exit as its newly elected politicians attack the barbarous austerity imposed on the country. What better time than to talk to a man looking for a plan to deal with a Euro meltdown. Lord Wolfson of Aspley Guys is a British peer and bona fide a captain of industry as the boss of the big listed high street retailer Next. He's put up $400,000 of his cash as a prize for whoever comes up with the best idea. And he joins me now from Leicester. Lord Wolfson, welcome to the programme. Good afternoon, welcome. Uh, now, you've shortlisted five entries, Lord Wilson for, for Wilson, for the prize in April, and the winner, I think, is going to be announced in July. Might that not be a bit late, looking at Europe now? Well, it might be too late, but on the other hand, I think it's much better that we get a good answer rather than a hurried answer. If uh, I'm just looking at uh, s some of the recent developments over the last couple of days, the fr French election, of course, if uh, f uh, François Hollande does go ahead with uh, growth stimulus, more borrowing, what is that likely to do in Europe? Well, I think economically it's, like an, it's likely to further weaken the whole European financial system. But more importantly, politically, it is a, it's a signal to the Greeks, to the Sp Spaniards, to the Italians, that their austerity, which is far worse than the French, and which has been imposed on them by the French and the Germans, that they should maybe quit too. And once they do that... I'm afraid the whole edifice falls apart. Mm. I, I think you, you see uh, the breakup of the euro as, as really pretty inev inevitable, and yet there are still many in Europe who believe that uh, Europe can use austerity and a little bit of growth perhaps now to solve its soaring debt and indeed the problem of competitiveness between nations. Why do they hang on to this? Well, I mean, I think, first of all, we have to hope like hell that they're right. Um, I hope that they're right and that, it, that we can all muddle through. But we have to be prepared for the fact that they might be wrong. And the reason they might be wrong is quite simply that southern European countries cannot compete at the current exchange rate. Greece's wages have risen by 30% relative to Germany's. Now, any country that does that is going to have their exports knocked out. If we do see some sort of breakup, or indeed a, a, a Greece, for example, leaving the euro, presumably a, a mass devaluation of the currency would then take place. How do you see this impacting, you know, on a, on a sort of ordinary person sort of level, a lifestyle level, if you like? Well, many countries have been through big devaluations in the past, uh, Argentina being one of the most recent examples. Um, and on the whole, what happens in those countries is they suffer a short, sharp downward shock, but then recover very quickly because the beauty of a devaluation is that it devalues everybody equally. So savings go down as much as debt, which goes down as much as wages. So in respect to the other people and the prices in your own country, you're not affected. It's only the outside world that is affected. And of course, to the outside world, your goods are suddenly 30% cheaper. Holidays in Greece will be 30% cheaper. That at least puts them on the path to recovery. Mm. So, for example, we're, we're talking about uh, devaluation of presumably or changes in the value of, of mortgages, of, of wages, of, of loans. And so, for, for example, if you've got, uh, I think you used the example of, of uh, uh, somebody in Britain who owns a, a holiday house in, in Greece or Spain, if Spain has to, has to devalue, um, how complicated can that get? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, it's relatively simple. If the house is converted into the new currency and the new currency devalues, then the value of that house falls with the currency. What is interesting is that as long as your mortgage has been taken out in that country, the chances are the mortgage on that property will also fall. So, yes, you've got a cheaper property, but you've also got a much lower mortgage to pay off in that country. So, and that's why devaluation works, is because it devalues debts and assets at the same rate. So do you think uh, people with those sorts of financial arrangement, arrangements are now changing their arrangements if, if they're going to find themselves exposed uh, come, come a, an exit? Absolutely. And in fact, this is already happening on a massive scale. What is happening is that people with deposits in Greek, Spanish, Italian banks are moving those deposits to German and Danish and um, 
Dutch banks. What that means is that 500 billion euros has moved from the southern European banks into northern European banks. That's been made up for with loans from the ECB. So already this restructuring is taking place. Lord Wilson, you're going back to your competition, your five entries um, range from sort of dealing with the problem of, of wages and prices right through to getting rid of the euro altogether. What are you looking for? Well, what we're looking for is the intellectual capital that Europe will need in the event that the euro does break up. One of the problems with this um, situation is it's kind of a catch-22. Governments, if they're seen to be thinking about it, or central banks, if they're seen to be thinking about it, will hasten the end of the euro. So that means that we need to leave it to private individuals and private initiatives to come up with the answers that Europe desperately needs if the worst happens. You actually gave a token prize to a 10-year-old from Belgium. What tickled you there? Um, I think it was the fact that he made an effort. Um, I wish that um, as many central bankers in, in Europe and indeed governments would make uh, as much, if not a lot more effort to, to deal with this problem. Right. Just one on Britain, Lord Wolfson, a, a double dip recession in Britain, of course. Um, how is that uh, translating to your huge uh, high street retailing operation? Well, well, much is expected, really. Um, you, we've, we've been through the most extraordinary financial crash the whole world has, and that's going to take time to work out of the system. So what we're seeing is the economy is, is not really growing, but it's also not really shrinking. So it's a question of, of trading water whilst people replenish um, their credit cards. And that process is going to go on for a year, maybe two years. It's, um, it's difficult, but it's not the end of the world. Well, Lord Wilson, thank you very much. I know Richard Branson put up a lot of money to solve climate change. I hope you're more successful, and I wish you very um, all the best uh, for your forthcoming nuptials. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, T. Bye.